In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the print settings in QImage 1. So in QImage 1, I have two printers available. But let's say I have a printer that I've just bought, and I want to be able to use it in QImage 1, and I want to set it up. First, let's go to System Preferences. Now, these are obviously directions for the Mac. This part will be slightly different on Windows. But the idea is that we want to install a printer driver. So let's go to printers and scanners. And let's click on plus down here. Now this is where you have to be careful. Because the uh, Mac OS is trying to be helpful. And it shows us that we have this new printer available at the Canon Pro 1000 series. However, if you click on this button down here, what happens is that the operating system will install the uh, Apple driver for the printer. You see it asks you for no more questions, it just goes ahead and installs it, which seems very helpful, but as you'll see in a moment, this can create problems. Because when we open QImage 1 and select this printer, you'll see that you have a very limited number of media types, and you won't be able to get the most out of QImage 1 if you rely on the Apple driver. So let's exit QImage 1, remove this printer, and we'll try again. This time when you click Add, click on Add Print or Scanner. Now select it in this list of printers available, but make sure down here, instead of saying Secure Air Print, you want to pick the Canon Pro 1000 series driver. Now, if this driver isn't available, you might need to go to the vendor website. In this case, I would go to the Canon website. And if I click on Drivers and Downloads, you can see that you can download the package to install the driver. You should do this first. So I have my uh, Canon Pro 1000 series available. And I'm going to say Select Software. You can type in here to filter out the choices to make it easier to find. That's the one I want. I say OK. I'll say Add. The operating system will now set up the printer for me. It should just take a few more seconds. Now we launch QImage 1. We can see that the Canon Pro 1000 series is available. And now we have many, many, uh, all of the different media types which the drive supports. Now that we have our printer driver installed, let's take a look at the print settings in QImage 1. The first setting, the obvious one, is which printer we want to use. Now this will list all the printers which you have available and system preferences. We'll concentrate on this Canon Pro 1000 series for now. The media type is read from the driver. And this is important because you need to know if you're printing to canvas or a very high quality photographic paper. You want to make sure you have the right paper selected. Now these two settings together are important and I'll come back to those a little bit later and explain why. Next thing to select would be the media size. I have a US letter size selected here, and you can see that the size of the uh, page less the margins is listed at the top of the live view here. So if I were to pick, say, a borderless, you see now we get a full 8.5 by 11 inch paper. Now you can choose to list all the sizes, or you can choose to filter them out where you have a lot of common uh, names in the list. It just makes it a little easier to see what's available. Now, if you want to set a custom size, you can. You'll find that one down at the bottom of the paper sizes. And then you can simply enter the size here. So if I wanted to print, say, on scrapbook paper, I could type 12 by 12 inches and click the little checkbox here. And then I get my custom paper size. Let me change this back to US letter. Now you can also change the orientation. If I prefer to work in a landscape print, I can do so here. There's also the buttons underneath the live view which toggle the same thing. Notice this white dashed line along the edge. This shows you where the paper is going to exit the printer. This is helpful if you're printing on roll paper to get things laid out the way you want. 
The driver may also let you select the paper source, in other words, where the actual media is going to print from on the printer. And then you can select the print resolution, which is currently spotted at max and high settings. Now the next control, the ICC color profile, this lets you select uh, a custom color profile for printing or turn color management off. I'm actually going to discuss this control in a separate video because color management in itself warrants its own topic. Then we have the sharpening control, which controls the deep focus sharpening algorithm in QImage 1. This is where QImage 1 is able to produce some really excellent output. Now you can leave this at the default or you can turn it off completely or set it anywhere in between. And you can uh, experiment with this control to get uh, exactly the kind of output you like. And then finally we have here cut marks and let's actually add a print so we can see what this does. Adding cut marks will give you some either crop marks at the corners of the print or guidelines which will go all the way across the page makes it easier when you actually want if you have multiple prints on the paper and you want to be able to cut them afterwards. Now before we look at some of the the buttons here and what they do let's notice this yellow uh, triangle right here warning us um, that something is not the way it should be. Well this is your cue to click on the properties button here. And what this does is this opens the driver and just lets you confirm any of the settings which QImage 1 may not be able to configure because they're not common to all drivers. So for instance, if we went down to the quality and media setting on this particular print driver, we might want to ensure that the uh, quality is highest. Notice that once we click OK, we get the little green check mark here, meaning everything is good. Now, one of the key features of QImage 1 is that it remembers all of your settings. So once you have made these settings, they will be remembered. You do not need to make them again. And any minor settings you do change, so if, say, for instance, if you change the resolution, those will be now remembered and saved to disk so that they can be recalled later. Now, remember I mentioned earlier the importance of the printer and the media type. Well, each one of these groups of settings is stored for each printer media type pair. So all of these settings now will be remembered for the Canon Pro 1000 series matte photo paper combination. If I was to change to a different type of paper, notice that the little yellow triangle comes back, warning me that I have not verified the settings for this printer media type combination. But if I go back to matte photo paper, those settings are loaded and QImage 1 is letting me know that everything is okay and that I'm ready to print. So whenever you see the green check mark here, that means that everything has been verified and that you can go ahead and print. So we could click the print button here and we get our preview of what the print will look like. Now, although these settings are all saved automatically, there may be situations where you want to save different variants of this uh, printer media type combination you may want to archive settings, you may want to share them with someone else. This is where these buttons come in helpful. We can click the save button here and you can see that all you have to do is enter a name so I could call this uh, the Pro 1000 Matt Custom and hit save and then all those settings are saved and then I can recall them later. So if I switch to a different printer and then I go open and I click the one that I just did here and I say load. Notice that it loads back everything that I had in those settings and everything's verified. Now you can also manage the custom settings here. If I select this one I can delete it. I'm just asking me to confirm deletion. I can also create copies. Uh, you can do, you know, rename things if I want to give this one a different name now. So you can control all of the print settings however you choose. And finally, this button here, this is the uh, reset button. Now this can be helpful if, if you, uh, you know, are not sure about certain settings. Maybe you made some obscure setting in a driver that you want to reset. Maybe um, things aren't working quite right and you want to just start over. If you click the reset button here, you can choose to reset all print settings. You've got to be careful with this one because this blows away all settings for every printer and every media type. Or you can do it just for this printer, or you can do it just for this printer media type combination. So if I was to click on media, 
Notice now that this has been reset back to the US letter page it was before, not borderless, and the yellow triangle is back to say that these settings have not been verified. Now, one thing that the properties button is useful for on Mac OS has to do with custom media size, and I get asked this question quite a lot. Let's say you've selected a custom media size, and let's say we'll make this uh, 10 by 13 inches. Well, by default, you get this half inch margin around the outside. Well, fortunately on Mac OS, you can control that, but you have to do it inside the driver. So let's open the driver by clicking on properties and you'll see that the paper size selected is QImage 1 custom currently set to 10 by 13 inches. If you click on this drop down menu and select manage custom sizes, make sure that QImage 1 custom is selected up here, you can now set the margins. So for instance if I set this to 0 0.2 all the way around hit OK, hit OK again. See, I now have a much smaller margin. And this would come in handy, especially if you want to print a custom size borderless. And all you would do in that situation is you would select the custom size again, but this time you would set all of these values to zero. Now notice that your printer actually has to be able to print a custom borderless uh, media. Uh, you may be able to set it in the driver, but that doesn't necessarily mean the printer can physically print it. But if it can, that's the way you would set up a custom borderless page size. So we've now covered the majority of the important print settings in QImage 1. I will be making another video which shows all about uh, color management and how you can use that with QImage 1. But I hope you found this useful and uh, look out for more of our videos on our YouTube channel.